Hi and welcome to a new episode of your weekly medical TV show on Alkarma TV, Why Code? Today's episode is very important and special. If we're talking about 10 million Americans are officially diagnosed with that disease, that means it's very important to discuss it. We'll talk about osteoporosis. Osteoporosis can cause bone to become weak and fragile, so fragile that even a fall or even mild stress such as bending over or coughing can cause a fracture. Osteoporosis-related fracture most commonly happen in the hip or wrist or spine. Osteoporosis affect men and women of all races, but more often with white Caucasian and Asian women, especially older women who are postmenopausal or at highest risk. Medication, healthy diet, weight-bearing exercise can help to prevent bone loss or strengthen already weak bones. We'll talk about all that today with three of the outstanding rheumatologists in Southern California from Covina Arthritis Clinic, Dr. Christina Chen, Dr. Ann Cosimario, Dr. Sammy Matias, whom I want to congratulate him for choosing him to be the president of California Rheumatology Alliance. So congratulations, Dr. Matias, and God bless all your next step. You deserve all the best. For interaction with the program, send in all your questions and concerns regarding today's topic to our official Facebook page, White Coat Alkarma TV. Or if you want to interact with, the, with my guest directly today, you can send your questions or you can call the numbers that will be shown on the screen at any time during the episode and we'll be more than happy to answer all your questions. To keep up with us, follow our Facebook page, White Coat Alkarma TV, or follow us on Instagram, White Coat Alkarma. And to watch our latest episode, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Alkarma TV, and please activate the notification bell. أعزائي مشاهدي قنوات الكارما في كل مكان في العالم بحب أرحب بيكم في حلقة جديدة من برنامجكم الطبي الأسبوعي واي كوت على شاشات قنوات الكارما والنهاردة هنتكلم في موضوع مهم جدا جدا وخاص جدا جدا هنصحح بعض المفاهيم الموضوع ده هو هشاشة العظام هي لما نعرف من الإحصائيات أنه تقريبا في دولة زي الولايات المتحدة عشرة مليون مصاب بموضوع هشاشة العظام والحقيقة جزء من المهمة بتاعتنا النهاردة في موضوعنا عن هشاشة العظام إن إحنا نصحح بعض المفاهيم لأنه أوتوماتيك أول ما بنقول كلمة هشاشة عظام كله بيقول آه ده, ده المرض اللي بيجي للستات عادة الحقيقة النهاردة إحنا بنصحح ده بشكل كبير جدا لأنه الرجال زي الستات بيصابوا بنفس المرض ولكن نسبة ال يعني الستات عندهم قابلية أكتر واحدة من كل اتنين الرجال واحد من كل أربعة فده الحقيقة بيأكد بشكل كبير جدا إنه الرجال كمان بيجي لهم هشاشة عظام مش بس السيدات لأنه ده جزء من المشاء بتاعتنا النهاردة إن إحنا نصحح المفهوم ده مع حضراتكم ليه مهتمين بهشاشة العظام؟ لأنه الحقيقة غير إنه الموضوع مهم جدا بطبيعة الأرقام الموجودة ولكن كمان النواتج اللي بتحصل عن الموضوع ده بتبقى سيئة جدا وخاصة الكسور اللي بتحصل نتيجة هشاشة العظام وأشهرها على الإطلاق بتبقى كسور العمود الفقري أو الرست أو الهاب اللي هم اللي هي عظمة الكسر اللي بيجي في عظمة الحوض وبالتالي ده بيبقى ليه مشاكل كبيرة جدا وكمبليكيشنز كتيرة جدا وبالتالي إحنا عايزين نتجنب ده النهاردة كمان هنتكلم على التغذية الجيدة اللي تساعد المرضى بتوع هشاشة العظام آه كمان هنتكلم بشكل كبير جدا واللي حضراتكم بتبقوا مهتمين بالجزء ده الأدوية اللي موجودة في السوق إيه آه يعني مين بيشنت كويس يبقى لكل دواء كانديديت لكل دواء كويس كمان الأعراض الجانبية اللي بتيجي من كل دواء ولو ده بيحصل مع حضراتكم إزاي آه يعني نتجنب الدواء ده تماما وننقل على دواء تاني هي بيسعدني ويشرفني النهاردة أن يكون معايا ثلاثة من أحسن الروماتولوجيست الموجودين في جنوب كاليفورنيا كوفينا أرثرايتس كلينيك الجروب اللي موجود دكتور كريستينا تشن دكتور أن كوسوموريو دكتور سامي ماتياس والحقيقة بنتهز الفرصة دي أن أنا أهني لانتخابه أنه يبقى رئيس الكاليفورنيا روماتولوجيست ألاينس لفترة طويلة فربنا يبارك كل خطواتك الحقيقة شيء بنفتخر بيه جداً آه انه يبقى عندنا ناس زي دكتور ماتيس الحقيقه دول هيبقوا ضيوفي النهارده زي ما حضراتكم عارفين تقدروا تبعتوا آه اوريدي جالنا اسئله كتير عن الموضوع بس تقدروا تبعتوا اسئلتكم عن الموضوع على صفحتنا الرئيسيه على الفيسبوك واي كود الكارما تي في تقدروا حضراتكم تبعتوا لنا اسئلتكم او تتصلوا بالارقام اللي هتبقى موجوده على الشاشه في اي وقت لو حضراتكم ليكوا اسئله على موضوع هشاشه آه العظام 
عشان نبتدي حلقتنا بسرعة بس بحب أكد كمان على التواصل ما بيننا وما بين حضراتكم على السوشيال ميديا بلاتفورمز بشكل عام فيسبوك وايت كود الكارما تي في حضراتكم شفتوه على الشاشة أو انستجرام وايت كود الكارما تقدروا برضو تتواصلوا معنا تبعتوا لنا كل أسئلتكم على كل موضوع أسبوع بأسبوع والحقيقة آخر وأهم سوشيال ميديا بلاتفورم اليوتيوب اليوتيوب بتاع قنوات الكارما موجود قدام حضراتكم على الشاشة تعملوا سبسكرايب وبعدين بنفعل زر التنبيهات عشان يوصل لكم كل ما هو جديد من شاشات قنوات الكارما في كل المجالات وتحديدا تابعوا حلقات وايت كوت موجودة على اليوتيوب شانل دي إن شاء الله زي ما أنا قلت هتبقى حلقة مختلفة وهنقدم كل الجديد اللي موجود في موضوع شاشة العظام فيلا بينا نبتدي فقرات برنامجنا النهاردة من وايت كوت Are you tired of being overweight? Do you suffer from diabetes? Do you suffer from hypertension? Do you suffer from obstructive sleep apnea? Do you suffer from hypercholesterolemia? Have you suffered from heart attacks in the past? Strokes in the past? Are you tired of being ostracized in public? Well, I have a solution for you. Robotic bariatric surgery. This can completely change your life. I'm Dr. Bobby Baskarow. I'm a robotic bariatric surgeon. I do robotic weight loss surgery, which can completely change your life. I offer three different types of surgeries that can completely change your life. The sleeve gastrectomy, the lap band, and the Roux-en-Y gastric bypass. One thing that's very unique about our program is that we have a dietitian, and you will get counseled on what to eat, what not to eat, and how to optimize the utilization of your tool for good weight loss. Hi, I'm Dr. Christina Chen. I'm one of the staff rheumatologists here at Covina Arthritis Clinic, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I graduated in my rheumatology fellowship from the University of Southern California. My residency is from Loma Linda University Medical Center. My um, medical schooling was at Western University College of the Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific, where I currently serve as assistant clinical professor, um, teaching rotating medical students. Um, additionally, my undergraduate degree is from UC Berkeley, where I completed a, a bachelor's of science in microbiology. Um, I have also some additional training from the musculoskeletal ultrasound school of rheumatology, where I completed my certification last year. Coming from an osteopathic background, I really enjoy taking care of my patients from a whole person centered approach. And that means focusing not only on their disease, but also on preventative measures and other ways they can aid themselves to improve and heal. Um, I've really had the privilege of diagnosing and treating various complex diseases uh, from lupus and scleroderma and vasculitis, and I hope to share that information with my patients in a way that is understandable and easy to approach. We've been able to um, complete studies in various fields here in the clinic, including psoriatic arthritis, um, rheumatoid arthritis, and um, small fiber neuropathy and fibromyalgia. And I hope that we can bring that information in a way that's cutting edge to help improve our patients' care as well. In terms of my hobbies, I enjoy gardening, hiking, biking, and really just staying active in this beautiful Southern Californian area. I look forward to answering your questions on White Coat on El Karma TV. Hello, my name is Dr. Anne Quismorio and I am a rheumatologist. I finished my medical degree uh, at University of Southern California 
and also completed my residency in internal medicine and a fellowship in rheumatology at the Los Angeles County USC Medical Center. I also have a master's degree in public health from Columbia University in New York City. As rheumatologists, we are committed to treating patients with uh, chronic illnesses. These are lifelong conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, lupus, and fibromyalgia. I try to take a collaborative approach with my patients. I try to develop a partnership to help my patients understand their medical conditions and help them also to understand the treatment uh, choices that we can hopefully make together. It is a great privilege to take care of patients with rheumatologic conditions uh, and it is also uh, very rewarding to be able to help our patients through their journeys. My hobbies include uh, fitness, um, I am a marathon runner. I enjoy traveling uh, as well as going to the movies. Since starting private practice with Dr. Matias and Dr. Chen, we have published a number of abstracts as well as peer-reviewed articles on psoriatic arthritis uh, and fibromyalgia. Um, I have also had the privilege of publishing and finishing a chapter with my father, who is also a rheumatologist. Uh, and this was published in the most recent textbook, uh, the Du Bois textbook of lupus erythematosus. I am looking forward to answering any questions uh, that you have regarding rheumatology on White Coat on El Karma TV. Hi, my name is Dr. Sam Matias. I'm a board-certified internal medicine and rheumatology. I finished my medical school in Egypt and also I finished Master of Orthopedic Surgery in Egypt. After that, I finished my residency in New Jersey in Seton Hall University and my fellowship at USC in Los Angeles. Since that time, I'm a founder of Covina Arthritis Clinic in Covina. I'm currently Clinical Associate Professor of Rheumatology at USC and also Assistant Clinical Professor of Rheumatology at uh, Western uh, DO School. I am also a Chairman of Advocacy Committee at California Rheumatology Alliance and past President of Southern California Rheumatology Society. I have multiple publications in peer review journals of rheumatology um, also, I have multiple presentations of abstracts in American College of Rheumatology meetings and European Congress of Rheumatology. And also, I'm a member of an uh, editorial uh, committee of uh, current rheumatology review journal and reviewer for many journals of rheumatology for many articles. I'm a fellow of American College of Rheumatology and a fellow of American College of Physicians and I also I hold a degree and served as a chairman, treasurer, and president of Southern California Motola Society for six years. I got multiple honorable awards during all my life of working in rheumatology, including an award from Mayor of Covina for conducting a health fair helping the homeless in the community, and also award of super doctor and top doctor in Los Angeles, in Los Angeles magazine. And also I got multiple awards from Arthritis Foundation, including top doctor and fundraiser for Arthritis Foundation. And during my journey, also I got award from the California Senate and the Congress, and also from LA County award and multiple beer review award and I got nominated for Hospital Hero Award. I'm doing multiple clinical trial in my office, including all kinds of disease, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, lupus, osteoarthritis, gout, and low back pain, and multiple different uh, soft tissue diseases. And in our office, we see different kinds of patients for chronic condition, and including all kinds of autoimmune and connective tissue disease, and multiple patients with rheumatoid arthritis and chronic diseases. Uh, I'm also international and national speaker for multiple pharmaceutical companies. 
I've given a lot of lectures for community, for patients and physicians, and also I give lectures in university setting and see me lectures in multiple universities, including board review course of rheumatology for American College of Physicians in Los Angeles yearly for the last 15 years. I assembled like Matthias Hope team for Arthritis Foundation, and now we have it as a Covina Arthritis team to help fundraising for Arthritis Foundation. And also I intervie interviewed in multiple TV channels, including HLN and CCN, and also multiple channels for Arabic speaking community and given uh, like educational talks in YouTube. My hobby is traveling and uh, walking and hiking, and I enjoy traveling very much. And I enjoy also seeing my patients, and I think this is the most important thing for me. I like to teach my patients, and I think my patient during my journey is my hero, or actually my master, because he teach me a lot during this journey. And also I enjoy doing a lot of charity work. I'm a member of Care for Needy Coptic, and recently we have a, a, a hostel built in Egypt for underserved area, and now this hostel is fully worked in Egypt, uh, in Elminia area. And also I do a lot of charity in Dominican Republic and here in Los Angeles for homeless and uh, people who are underserved in multiple areas in Los Angeles. I'm looking forward to answer your questions in White Coat uh, program in Al Karma TV. And we are honored as a Covina Arthritis Clinic to be in White Coat program. Thank you very much. اهلا بحضراتكم مره تانية في الجزء الرئيسي من حلقتنا النهارده اللي زي ما قلت لحضراتكم بنتكلم عن موضوع مهم جدا وجزء من الرساله بتاعتنا النهارده انه خاص بالسيدات والرجال كمان وهنشوف ده كمان مع ضيوفنا باثناء الحلقه. It's always a pleasure and honor having you, starting with Dr. Christina Chen. Welcome back in White Coat. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Quasimario, welcome back in White Thank Coat. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Matthias, welcome in White Coat. Thank you. And congratulations for being the president one more time for California Rheumatology Alliance. God bless your steps. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here, we're going to start with you. The questions are quickly. We're going to start with a lot of questions. As you know, we're going to start with our Facebook, White Coat, Karma TV. You can send us all the questions. لو في اي اسئله لضيوفي وحابين تتكلموا معاهم دايركت اتصلوا بالارقام اللي هتبقى موجوده قدام حضراتكم على الشاشه وهنبقى سعداء جدا ان احنا نستقبل اسئله حضراتكم اثناء الحلقه. دكتور كيو اتس اوسي بروسيس فيري امبورتنت افكتس ا لوت اوف مين اند وومن اند بارت اوف اور مسج توداي افكتس مين تو نوت جاست وومن رايت؟ سو واتس اوسي بروسيس اند To see how big is the problem, can you walk us through some statistics? Sure, of course. So just uh, to begin, um, osteoporosis is a very common disease that affects the skeletal system. Okay. It leads to thinning of the bones, uh, which make them more likely to break or fracture. Okay. Um, unfortunately, these fractures have multiple consequences, such as chronic pain, stooped posture, and difficulty moving around. Okay. Um, they can also lead to hospitalization as well as increased mortality and morbidity. So osteoporosis by itself is not painful? Pain no, comes that is, from the complication. That's correct. Okay. That is correct. Okay. And uh, if you can walk us through some statistics, some pictures, what happens sure. to the bone and all that. Um, so in the, um, we have a slide here. Okay. Slide um, three. Mm. Yes. And these are images from the American College of Rheumatology. Okay. Um, on the left, on the left side of the screen, um, this is a microradiograph of normal bone. Okay. Um, on the right, we see a microradiograph of osteoporotic bone. So that's on the right side, that's what happens to the bone and that's osteoporosis. That's correct. That's okay. correct. So just comparing the two slides, mm -hmm. you can notice a difference in thickness. Right. The right photo actually demonstrates decreased bone density as well as microfractures, which you can see right. um, sort of in the middle of, of, of that left picture. Okay. And then, but statistics and so, the yeah. economical burden. And all of course. Stuff. So again, I'd like to emphasize that osteoporosis is a very common disease that leads to weak bones um, and uh, fracturing. Okay. Um, 34 million Americans have wow. low bone density okay. or low bone mass. Okay. And about 10 million Americans actually have osteoporosis. Okay. 
So like you mentioned, it can affect both men and women. Yeah. However, it, it, affects, um, it affects them um, a, a bit differently. Okay. So one in two women over the age of 50 will have an osteoporosis-related fracture in their lifetime. Okay. In comparison, men, um, it is about one in four men so over the age of 50. So that's almost 25%, which is like, it's not a, like it's huge amount. 25% when it comes to statistics, it's big. It's number. correct. That, that, that is absolutely right. correct. Um, it's also thought that by 2020, which is not too far from now, right. uh, one Next in two year. exactly, <laughs> one in two Americans over the age of 50 will be at risk for fractures from osteoporosis or low bone mass. Wow! So we're getting that close to the complication, even that's like correct. by that's next correct. year. That's um, correct. We know that there are about two million bone breaks per year. Wow! Yes, that's a lot. Um, and unfortunately, uh, follow up with patients who have osteoporosis. Um, only two out of 10 patients with osteoporosis actually get follow-up. So follow-up is pretty inadequate. Okay. Um, so part of the message today, it affects men and women. That's correct. And you need to follow up if, exactly. if you have that. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, we also want to talk about um, hip fractures. Okay. So one of the greatest consequences of osteoporosis um, are hip fractures. Um, they're significant um, in that they can substantially increase the risk of death um, and major morbidity. 20% okay. um, of hip fracture patients require long-term nursing home care. Right. And only about 40% of, of patients will fully regain their pre-fracture level of independence. Wow. Um, so it can play um, a huge role in, in decreasing one's quality of life. Right. Disability, Correct. subsequently productivity and all that Correct. stuff. Okay, thank you so much. The first question Dr. Kusumori was about what is the disease of the disease that we have so far. And will you tell us how many of the problems are also the problems that are on the disease? The first question Dr. Kusumori said that the disease of the disease is the disease that is the disease of the disease in all the bodies, in all the bodies, in all the bodies, in all the bodies. المرض نفسه مش مؤلم او ما فيهوش الم ولكن الاثار المترتبه عليه او الكومبليكيشنز المشاكل اللي بتحصل نتيجه ده هي اللي بيبقى فيها نسبه الم كبيره وتحديدا ركزت على فكره الكسور. الحقيقه معانا سلايد مهمه جدا وهوري حضراتكم كمان يعني على الواقع ايه اللي بيحصل الحقيقه السلايد دي الناحيه الشمال ده العظم الطبيعي او الـ الـ يعني كثافه العظم الطبيعيه السلايد اللي على اليمين شايفين حضراتكم البون بيبقى رفيع قد ايه وكمان بيحصل فيه نوع من الكسور بالظبط كده اللي عليها البوينتر ده زي ما حضراتكم شايفين على ارض الواقع عشان نقرب لحضراتكم شويه الموضوع ده العظم ويمكن انا هحطهم ورا بعض لو الكاميرا تقدر تجيبهم ده كثافه العظم سوري ده كثافه العظم الطبيعيه زي ما حضراتكم شايفين ده لما بيحصل نوع من هشاشه العظام وبيحصل الكسور زي ما حضراتكم شايفين هنا دي كثافة العظم الطبيعية دي كثافة العظم بعد ما بيحصل هشاشة العظام حضراتكم لاحظين الفرق الكبير بين الاثنين والتغيرات اللي بتحصل في العظم والحقيقة الدكاترة هيشرحها لنا أثناء الحلقة كمان حاجة مهمة جدا عشان نروح مع الإحصائيات بسرعة عشان نقدر نخلص كل الأسئلة اللي معانا تقريبا 34 مليون في الدولة في الدولة زي الولايات المتحدة بيبقى عندهم مشاكل في فكرة كثافة العظم 10 مليون منهم بيتأثروا بفكرة هشاشة العظام، واحد من كل اثنين من السيدات بيتأثروا، واحد من كل أربعة من الرجال بيتأثروا، وده جزء مهم جدا زي ما أنا قلت من أول الحلقة، جزء مهم من الرسالة اللي عايزين نوصلها النهاردة، إنه كتير من الرجال بيتخيلوا إنه المرض ده بيؤثر على السيدات بس وحاجات كده، الحقيقة لأ، واحد من كل أربعة من الرجال كمان بيتأثروا بالقصة دي، كمان معلومة مهمة جدا قالتها دكتور كوسوموريا إنه آه 2020 السنة الجاية تقريبا واحد من كل اثنين آه من, من السيدات اللي فوق خمسين سنة هيبقوا معرضين لحدوث الكسور وبالذات كسور الحوض بيبقى ليها complications كتير على المدى الطويل آه وكمان بتخلي تقريبا عشرين في المية ما بيرجعش للشورة الأصلية أربعين في المية بيرجع أقرب ما يكون للطبيعي آه كمان مهم جدا أن احنا آه نعرف اثنين من كل عشرة بيشنس uh, محتاجين يعملوا فولو اب مع الروماتولوجيست بتاعهم لانه اثنين من كل عشرة تقريبا بيحتاجوا فولو اب للتريتمنت بتاع الاوستي بروسيس فده مهم جدا uh, ان احنا نعرفه اخر معلومه هقولها 2 مليون كسر كل سنه بيحصل نتيجه 
هشاشة العظام فمهم جدا ان احنا يعني زي ما بيقول يحصل بقول يحصل توعية للموضوع ده لانه موضوع مهم جدا دكتور ماتياس what cause osteoporosis uh, in other meaning what are the predisposing factors for osteoporosis so many people lose bone by time okay so over time when we get older we lose bone especially women after menopause with loss of estrogen they're losing bone okay and because it's asymptomatic disease no one feel it okay so basically the only we time they feel it is the fracture right. yes and there is a lot of predisposing factors like say age when we get older getting like osteoporosis like above a 65 and above okay. and we have people now living until 90 so we have to be and even more so watching that okay and genders female more than male okay it's an st certain ethnic group like white and asian has problem right people who take certain medications like cortisone or okay. uh, that's causing problem or some medication for uh, seizures like dilant and others affecting calcium metabolism okay. people have certain disease like hyperthyroid uh, or hyperparathyroid or certain ca kind of disease. People who smoke a lot or, or drinking heavy, that's a problem. Okay. Or immobility, which is not moving a lot, that's so a problem. So exercise is important. Yes, part definitely of part of the today. treatment. Right. So, and heavy drinker, as we said. So that's all is, and plus history in the family, it is genetically, okay. which is the main thing. If the family has a problem with hip fracture, mothers, this can happen for the uh, kids. Uh, when they get older. Oh, okay, perfect. So, Dr. Chen, everybody's watching us now after Dr. Matthias mentioned mm -hmm. all those predisposing mm -hmm. factors will ask that question. Will I get osteoporosis? Right, so just to build upon what Dr. Matthias said, if you have had a fracture before, the people who've had fractures have the highest risk of developing another fracture, okay. almost an increased 50% chance. So those people definitely need to get evaluated. Um, there's studies that show that smokers have lower bone mass and higher fracture rates. Women who smoke have lower levels of, the, of, of hormone estrogen, which is a key part of bone health. Okay. And he touched on some medications, so to go into that a little bit more depth, um, the long-term use of steroids causes um, bones to not be able to build up as well. Okay. Um, some when people, we say steroids, just mm -hmm. to make it put it in a simpler language, we mean prednisone. And right, all that. prednisone okay. in other countries, prednisolone, right. um, methyl, um, solumedrol, Pred things like that. Okay. Um, there's anti-seizure medications. Sometimes people need to take this for long term, and as he stated, this can affect bone metabolism. Okay. Thyroid medications when used incorrectly, so that's really important to see your family doctor, your endocrinologist, to adjust it, because if you overtake it, okay. then you can cause your bones to break down faster. Okay. Um, Antacids, certain cancer medications, if you need cancer therapy, um, it, doctors will often give you also um, bone building medications to prevent you from losing. Uh, uh, and then additionally diseases, oftentimes you know, as rheumatologists we treat rheumatoid arthritis and a lot of those patients have lower bone mass from inflammation. Perfect. Uh, the question is Dr. Matthias and Dr. Chen, who are the people who have the most risk of having the risk of the risk of the risk? يعني الاثنين قالوا انه تقريبا لو في تاريخ مرضي عائلي في العيله مهم جدا ان احنا نحط عينينا على المرض ده ونعرف انه اي حد عنده تاريخ مرضي عائلي هيبقى اكيد اكتر عرضه من غيره كمان بالنسبه للجندر السيدات بيجي اكتر بتيجي بيحصل لهم اكتر من الرجال ولكن الرجال ستيل معرضين لفكره هشاشه العظام قلنا في السيدات واحده من كل اثنين في الرجال واحد من كل اربعه آه كمان مهم جدا الفئة العمرية زي ما قال دكتور ماتيس كل الـ 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 السيدات اللي فوق 65 سنة آه بيبقوا معرضين بشكل أكبر من غيرهم آه إنه يحصل لهم نوع من حشاشة العظام آه فكمان البنية الجسمانية للسيدات السيدات الأقل في البنية الجسمانية أو الأكثر نحافة آه بيبقوا عرضة أكثر من غيرهم من الرجال كمان نقطة مهمة جدا لو في تاريخ آه من الكسور نتيجة حشاشة العظام بتبقى حضرتك او حضرتك معرضه اكتر انه يحصل كسور تاني او يحصل هشاشه عظام بشكل اكبر نقطه مهمه جدا ورساله مهمه آه بنوجهها من خلال وايت كود التدخين له علاقه هامه جدا بهشاشه العظام وسبب من الاسباب الرئيسيه في هشاشه العظام فبنرجو كل مشاهدينا المدخنين ان هم يفكروا في ده بشكل كبير جدا 
واحده من النقط المهمه جدا اللي قالتها دكتور تشين انه الادويه الناس اللي بتاخد ادويه معينه بتبقى اكتر عرضه من غيرها في هشاشه العظام وتحديدا الناس اللي بتاخد ستيرويدز او زي ما احنا قلنا البريدنيزون بريدنيزولون الحاجات دي كلها بيبقوا معرضين لهشاشه العظام اكتر من غيرهم كمان الناس اللي بتعاني من امراض الغده الدرقيه بياخدوا الادويه دي بيبقوا معرضين اكتر من غيرهم ادويه الصرع زي التجريتول والحاجات دي برضو آه وناس كمان بتستخدمها لبعض الامراض النفسيه زي الاضطراب الوجداني الثنائي القطبيه والحاجات دي فمهم جدا ان احنا نحط عينينا على ده كمان مضادات الحموضه ما ناخدش الموضوع لايتلي ان انا بجيبها من على الاوفر ذا كاونتر وخلاص آه مضادات الحموضه بكثره ممكن تبقى سبب من اسباب هشاشه العظام آه بعض ادويه الكانسر كمان فمهم جدا ورساله مهمه لكل مشاهدينا النهارده ان احنا نحط عينينا آه على الادويه دي الناس وده ناقشنا الحلقه اللي فاتت اللي عندهم امراض مزمنه في الكلى مهم جدا ان احنا كمان نحط عينينا على موضوع هشاشه العظام لانه موضوع مهم جدا زي ما انا قلت بيأثر على السيدات والرجال. So Dr. Chen, what about men? Because yeah. as I mentioned before, part of our message today to deliver that men is, is liable to osteoporosis, not like women, but they're liable. Right, so for slightly different reasons. In the U.S., you know, prior to 2006, there's data that showed that almost 2 million men have osteoporosis and up to 12 million are at risk here. Um, men experience about a third of all the hip fractures here in the U.S. Okay. and the risk of death after hip fracture is much greater in men than women. Okay. Um, so that's a really good reason for them to want to seek treatment. Uh, common risks for men with osteoporosis would be more alcohol abuse, uh, long-term steroid use, the medications we talked about before, and then something called hypogonadism. Okay. So this is more related to uh, men who may be getting hormone therapy for prostate cancer. Right. They're forced to have lower testosterone levels or for other reasons if they have a disease and that can lead to higher risk of fracture. Okay. Or men like taking anabolic steroids in the gym and that might affect them as well? Possibly, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. آه الحقيقة كمان آه سؤال مهم جدا ماذا عن الرجال في الموضوع ده زي ما قالت دكتور تشين تلت تلت الكسور اللي بتيجي في عظم الحوض للرجال بتيجي من حشاشة العظام مهم جدا كمان انه احنا نعرف انه الكومبليكيشنز او المشاكل اللي بتيجي من ده بتبقى آه كبيرة جدا لانه كسر عظم الحوض ممكن يؤدي لمشاكل طبية كتيرة جدا كمان آه الـ 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 الناس او الرجال اللي على أدوية للبروستات كانسر أو سرطان البروستاتا ممكن بيأدي بشكل كبير جدا لأنه يحصل نوع من هشاشة العظام. Before we go in depth, Dr. Matthias, what happens in osteoporosis and bone remodeling? Let's take our first call for the day. Elham uh, from Tennessee. Elham, uh, حضرتك على الهواء تفضلي. Hello. معانا المكالمة يا شباب. الهام تفضلي حريك على الهواء الو الو حريك على الهواء تفضلي صباح الخير ايوه صباح الخير يا دكتور تفضلي يا فندم حريك على الهواء لو سمحت عايزه اسال بس على الزئبه الحمراء والصدفيه اوكي حاضر أه علاقتهم بهشاشه العظام اه والعلاج بتاعهم ايه يا دكتور ما فيش علاج وهي الزئبه الحمراء عند بنت اختي وما وشها بيطفح حاجات زي الجمام الوجسمه كله وبتاخد كورتيزون اوكي فايه العلاج المناسب يا دكتور يا رب يخليك حتى ابعته لها من هنا حاضر حاضر انا الاول هنجاوب لحضرتك على علاقه دولا بال بالهشاشه العظام العلاج يمكن اكلم حضرتك على التليفون بعد الحلقه نناقشه بالتفصيل لانه يعني مش هيبقى موضوعنا قوي النهارده بس نجاوب على حضرتك any relation between systemic lupus psoriasis and osteoporosis medication wise yeah there is increased risk, definitely, people who have uh, lupus to get osteoporosis. And we see that even young age female. Okay. And when they take so a lot of cortisone. She's zone, young, she's, yes. she's still liable yes. to get osteoporosis. And, and actually, that is uh, one of the reasons we do bone density before a monopausal time, okay. when people take too much steroid. Okay. So we see that when patients take a lot of steroid, they get fracture, okay. multiple fracture from steroid. So we have to give them protective medications in this age. Okay, what about psoriasis? Uh, and psoriasis is the same thing. A, as a disease is not, but generally, is if, if patient takes a lot of steroid, it can happen to them. Okay. So it's more medication related. And, uh, but generally, usually when we have osteopenia around the, bone, the, the cartilage and get these things, can be bone, can be less 
uh, like uh, strings. Especially if they're taking high doses yeah. of steroids and yeah. stuff for lupus and psoriasis. Hey, the question for you, Madam Ilham, if anyone has a disease, a disease, or a disease, it will be on a certain amount of steroids. This will make them more difficult to get more difficult for the disease. As I said, Dr. Matias, it's important that we are doing in the middle of the year of the year of the year of the year of the year. بعد شويه فمهم جدا ان احنا نعمل فحوصات عشان نشوف موضوع مرض هشاشه العظام بالنسبه للعلاج هنرجع لحضرتك بعد الحلقه ونكلم حضرتك في موضوع العلاج سو دكتور ماتيس ليتس جو مور ان ديبث وات هابن ان اوستيوبروزيس ذا مونلي موديلنج ميكانيزم ان اول ذات ستاف يوزولي وين بيبل لايك جيتن اولدر اند وومن جيت اولدر اند لوزنج استروجين اند استروجين از ا فيري امبورتنت هرمون تو بيلد ان بون ثرو سيرتن سيل كول اوستيوبلاست سو وين when they lose estrogen this bone became uh, cells became very weak and would be hy hyperactive other cells that okay. causing osteoporosis okay and i like to show the pictures sure. here and actually this picture is slide 12 and 13. first mm -hmm. one it shows that how is our bone building okay so the bone actually have so in a slide 12 that's the normal process right? exactly okay and that's an important one because usually we create it in this way there is a cells called osteoblast it build in bone Okay. So it has like cement, putting the cement in the bone and make it strand this way. Okay. And basically, and there is another cell called osteoclast, which absorb bone. And that's actually done in harmony. So building bone and after 120 days, this bone will be like resorbing. So and then we see this dip as we see here and the second slide and CTS. And then basically it come the other cells build another bone and that's what's happening every 120 days. Okay. Some areas like jaw is getting faster, okay. even more than that, less than 120 days. So average and, 120. Yes. Okay. And then this is with using of calcium and phosphorus and, and all this other kind of uh, uh, metabolites that helping building it. Like exactly when you looked at it like a cement, okay. when you build a house with putting a cement and there is a building and then other, and this done in harmony every 120 days. And this is what's happening in normal bone. Okay. Strength in young age, male or female. Okay. So what happens in osteoporosis? In osteoporosis, we'll, we will lose the estrogen or androgen or age or genetically after certain age. And then the cells that build bone became very weak. Okay. And that's because these cells based on estrogen mainly. And when it became weak, it built, it built like kind of poor quality of bone. Okay. And the cells that actually, uh, oste osteoclasts that absorb bone became very active okay. and more numbers and actually with more some called rank like and others make it activations more and then make more resorption as we see here in this slide and more dip in the bone without kind of building it again. So that's what happening. It became a weak bone like what we see in osteoporosis. Okay, so basically if you want to summarize this, it's uh, defective quality production, yes. right? In higher resorption than... And more active resorption cells. Okay. Hey, uh, Bardo, many of the important questions that you can understand in a very simple way, the way, or I don't want to say the way, how is the disease that happens in the body? The picture is number 12, we will show you the way, this is the way of building the natural body in our body. The cells that are the purple, these that you can see, these we call the cells that are the natural body for the natural body, the osteoclast. بتيجي وده بيحصل طبيعي جدا كل 120 يوم زي ما قال دكتور ماتيس الخلايا دي بتاخد جزء من العظم ونبتدي نبني غيره في الجزء اللي تحتها اللي هي الخلايا البيربل اللي حضراتكم شايفينها وبتسيب الاماكن الفاضيه دي عشان عظم جديد يتكون تيجي الخلايا اللي تحت في الجزء اللي تحت تبتدي تبني العظم ده وتحط طبقه جديده طبقه على حسب وصف دكتور ماتيس طبقه اسمنتيه بتبني بيها العظم لو بصينا لسلايد 13 السلايد اللي بعدها على طول هنلاقي آه انه نفس الميكانيزم ده ولكن الكواليتي بتاع العظم نفسه اللي بيتبني بيبقى عظم هش جدا وضعيف جدا زي ما حضراتكم شايفين وبالتالي بيحصل نوع من الهشاشه آه اللي حضراتكم شايفينها في الجزء اليمين تحت الصوره آه ده بيبقى نتيجه آه زي ما بنقول الكواليتي بتاع العظم نفسه اللي بيتكون الخلايا اللي بتبني ما بتبنيش بنفس الكواليتي والخلايا اللي بتهدم بتهدم بريت اسرع وبالتالي بيحصل موضوع هشاشه العظام بشكل كبير جدا. وي هاف انذر فون كول فروم جيرماني معانا بنت الرب من المانيا حضرتك على الهواء يا فندم اتفضلي. هلو اتفضلي يا فندم. 
Uh, whatever. اتفضلي حضرتك اللي رايحك. So I uh, okay I will just make as uh, autoimmune disease uh, positive lupus and uh, positive anti anti uh, for sleep. Uh, صوت حضرتك شويه صوت حضرتك شويه واطي لو حضرتك تعلي صوتك شويه او تعلي صوت في الاستوديو عشان كده. Can you hear Anti-phosphate is anti-phosphate. Anti-phosphate is anti-phosphate. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. I'm 14 years old. And just now I have two problems. You have skin problems? Two problems. Two problems. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. I'm taking, since two years ago, my German doctor gave me a... Uh, a medicine that uh, that is for malaria. It is called the the, the, the medical name of it is hydroxy chloroquine. Yeah. Hydroxy chloroquine. Okay. Yeah. What else? Uh, I take it uh, once daily. Uh, my weight is 56 kilogram. Okay. Um, and I take, of course, aspirin, 100 milligram. Okay. I have two problems. The okay. first problem is that um, with stress, I've got a severe pain in my muscle to the degree that I cannot uh, take off my clothes. And okay. also uh, pain in my so muscles. Being... And sometimes when I uh, wake up, uh, my fingers uh, are not strained and um, I have a lot of pain and uh, some... Um, like my fingers is, has, has like a flam, uh, inflammation. Okay. And uh, when I have asked my doctor, he told me that this is because of the stress and uh, the antibodies just reacted with the stress. Okay. The and, second uh, problem? I have to... So that's the first yeah, problem, right? The second right? problem, the second I, problem? Have, uh, I got a high percentage of protein in my urine. Uh, it was more than 1,000 and the normal is, should be less than 100. Okay. And uh, now I have an appointment with no no doctor, yeah. but it is a problem in Germany to get a prob uh, an appointment so so quick. So so what I know now that I have an intermission in my kidney. And, and uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but your question is about osteoporosis, like liability with those all kind of medications. We can answer. We can answer it for her. It's fine. She can. Okay. okay, so I think uh, my understanding is she's asking questions about symptoms, which may be more related to her lupus. Right, diffuse pain and proteinuria. Right. However, you know that's un that's not necessarily related to osteoporosis, as we talked about before. There's no pain in osteoporosis until you experience a fracture. But certainly, you know, she would need a doctor's visit, somebody to look at her, and physically examine her joints to see if it's more related to her lupus disease or if it may be a side effect of the medication. medication. I mm -hmm. couldn't clearly understand if she was saying her symptoms started before or after the medication started, but that's that needs an examination in the office. One, one question, she said that protein is more than 1,000, yes. and that's something for lupus is very important. Okay. So she needs to have a, a, a kidney biopsy for sure, okay. because we have a rule, anyone has a protein urine more than 500, in, in lupus patients, we have to have a kidney biopsy. Okay. Can be lupus nephritis from lupus. If she has antiphospholipid syndrome, can be secondary to antiphospholipid syndrome. Okay. And the only way to find out to have a biopsy. Right. So I am highly recommend to, to, to actually to get this biopsy done, number one. Number two is taking plaquenil and prednisone. That's actually very weak for your condition now when you have lupus nephritis. So she needs you need more. Control. Because if it shows that active lupus, you may get like kind of cytoxin, rituxin, cellcept. It depends on multiple, a more aggressive medicine. Okay. One tablet of plaquenil is not enough. And plaquenil, we have to count now the new recommendation guideline. We do five milligram per kg. So you have to up the dose to the point that makes it good for you. Okay. But definitely, lupus looks like active and need to be treated. Okay. بنت الرب من ألمانيا زي ما حضرتك شفتي الريكومنديشنز بتاع الدكاترة دكتور تشين قالت رقم واحد حضرتك محتاجة فحص كامل لكل الجوينتس المفاصل بتاعة حضرتك عشان نشوف تأثير يا إما تأثير اللوبس عليهم يا إما الأعراض الجانبية اللي من الأدوية فده شيء مهم جدا لأنه بطبيعة الحال زي ما قلنا الأوستيوبروسيس لوحده مش بينفول ولكن 
ممكن يكون يا اما اعراض جانبيه من الادويه يا اما الـ الـ يعني حضرتك تشوفي اللوبس تاثيره ايه على الجوينتس دكتور ماتياس كمان قال نتيجه انه الـ الـ البروتين اللي موجود في الـ في, الـ في البول عند حضرتك 1000 وده نسبه كبيره جدا زي ما هو قال الجايد لاينز لحد 500 لازم نعمل ناخد بايوبسي من الـ من الـ من الـ من الكلى نفسها لازم ناخد عينه من الكلى عشان نشوف المشكله اللي موجوده في اليورين دي جايه من اللوبس نفسه ولا جايه من الاي بي ال اللي هي الانتي فوسفوليبيد سندروم اللي عند حضرتك فمهم جدا ان حضرتك تتابعي الفتره الجايه الادويه كمان بتاعت حضرتك محتاجه تتغير لحاجات اكتر قوه اجريسيف اكتر من فكره البلاك ونيل والبريدنيزون مع بعض آه زي ما دكتور ماتيس ريكومندد كمان آه نقطه مهمه جدا انه البلاك ونيل بتاع حضرتك نسبته قليله جدا محتاج يزيد ولو كمان تاخدي اجريسيف ميديكيشن اكتر Uh, one last call for this segment uh, from Texas. Bint al Rabbi from Texas. Tfadali Hadrit Maana. Al Hawa. Sabah al Khair. Sabah al Nuri. Hadrit Al Hawa. I'm لدرجة مش قادرة أقف يعني فقدت التوازن تماما ورحت الإمرجنسي روم وقالوا لي ده فيرتجو من الحباية اللي باخدها والدكتور رفع الدواء عني قال لي أنت جسمك مش قابله مش باخد أي دواء دلوقتي. أوكي. حاضر يا فندم احنا هنجاوب ده لحضرتك في الجزء بتاع الأدوية احنا هنناقش الدواء ده موجود معانا في الحلقة النهاردة آه هنجاوب على سؤال حضرتك يا فندم حاضر. دكتور كيو أي هاف like a long question for you two parts when and how we get uh, screened uh, from most of the process sure so we use a special machine called the dexa scanner and this is the gold standard for making the diagnosis okay. it's also the most accurate so you'll st you will start with how and yes, then when yes this okay. is how yes okay yeah. perfect um, usually uh, the machine consists of a padded table and a radiograph, which okay. uh, we use to capture the image and the measurements. So you'll see that on the top right corner of the slide. Okay. Um, so that's a DEXA. That's the DEXA scan. Okay. Um, the picture on the bottom is actually an ultrasound of the heel, okay. uh, which supposedly can measure bone density. Uh, you might see these at health mm -hmm. fairs or for like free screening um, programs. However, the um, the results are not as accurate. Okay, because that was my question. Mm -hmm. Which one is more accurate? Which yes. one we can depend on more? We we depend always on the the DEXA scan. Okay, so we can screen with ultrasound, but or but we, still DEXA. We can screen with the ultrasound, but we recommend making the diagnosis by using the DEXA scan. Okay. Yes. The second part of my question: mm -hmm. When do we get uh, screened? Sure. All right. So for women, women who are sixty five years or older should get a bone density scan. Okay. Um, it's recommended that we do it probably around um, every two years. Okay. For any woman who is less than 65 years of, old, 65 years of age um, who are postmenopausal and who might have uh, multiple risk factors, so risk factors such as low body weight, um, prior fracture, high risk medication use like we were talking about um, right. prednisone, um, they should also be um, scanned and okay. evaluated for, for bone density. Okay. Um, anybody or any woman who has a history of fracture after the age of 50 okay. should also be evaluated. Scanned. Yes. Okay. Um, um, and then any woman who's also perimenopausal, um, who's not necessarily postmenopausal, um, who have uh, risk factors such as what I mentioned previously should also be um, evaluated. Okay. What about men? Do for men, screened? so for men, yes, of course. So men age 70 and older oh. should get a bone density okay. scan. I thought we were unique. We don't. No, 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 screens. no. Like we said earlier, men are at risk for osteoporosis as well. Okay. Uh, for men who are less than 70 years of age, who also have um, risk factors, like we've we've mentioned Same earlier. Same risk factors, medication. Exactly. Okay. Disease. And prior exa fractures. Prior fracture. Exactly. Um, they should also be uh, screened with a bone density scan. Okay, thank you so much. Hey, uh, so Eli, Dr. Cosmorio, can I am to say, yeah, and show if we have a hashashat or the screen. The idea that we have a fracture or a cast, and 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 we have a
الحقيقه السؤال الاولاني كان ايه احسن حاجه نستخدمها في فكره المسح ده فقالت لي رقم واحد حاجه اسمها الديكسا ودي بنقيس بيها كثافه العظم بشكل عام لو جبنا السلايد معانا هتشوفوها حضراتكم هي زي مكنه وسرير حضرتك او حضرتك بتنامي وبيحصل المسح ده اللي هو بالظبط اللي عليها البوينتر الحاجه الثانيه الالترا ساوند العادي خالص بس كمان اللي قالته دكتور كوسوموريو ان احنا لازم الديكسا ادق بكتير ومور ريلايبل عن الالترا ساوند بالنسبه للحاجات الجايد لاينز اللي احنا قلنا لحضراتكم عليها اي سيده فوق 65 سنه اوتوماتيك لازم يحصل لها سكريننج على البون دنستي او كثافه العظم لو سيده يعني وصلت لمرحله انقطاع الدوره حتى لو هي اقل من 60 سنه بس عندها ريسك فاكتورز يعني ايه ريسك فاكتورز يعني الـ 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 الجسم بتاعها مثلا البنيه بتاعته اقل من الطبيعي او رفيعه جدا مثلا او لو حصل كسر قبل كده فمش لازم نستنى لسن ال 65 عشان نعمل المسح ده آه كمان الناس اللي بتاخد ادويه بتخليهم آه عندهم آه قابليه لهشاشه العظام اكتر من غيرهم آه زي كل الادويه اللي احنا آه ذكرناها سواء ادويه الحموضه ادويه الصرع الادويه بتاع الازمه البريدنيزون الحاجات دي كلها مهم جدا ان احنا دايما دول كمان يحصل لهم سكرين الرجال عن سن 70 سنه بيحصل لهم اوتوماتيك سكرين او لو هم اقل من 70 سنه وحصل كل اللي احنا قلنا عليه بالظبط مع السيدات حصل قبل سن 70 سنه مش لازم نستنى لسن 70 سنه عشان نعمل المسح ده كده نكون غطينا حاجات كتير مع حضراتكم في في الجزء ده عن هشاشه العظام هنطلع بريك ونرجع مع حضراتكم نتكلم على الحاجات المهمة بقى اللي هي الأعراض والعلاج وكل اللي حضراتكم مستنيينه هنناقش كل الأدوية اللي موجودة في السوق معانا كمان هنناقش النهاردة أحدث الأدوية اللي, اللي نزلت قريب هنتكلم عنها وعن الأعراض الجانبية ناخد بريك ونرجع مع حضراتكم تاني Are you tired of being overweight? Do you suffer from diabetes? Do you suffer from hypertension? Do you suffer from obstructive sleep apnea? Do you suffer from hypercholesterolemia? Have you suffered from heart attacks in the past? Strokes in the past? Are you tired of being ostracized in public? Well, I have a solution for you. Robotic bariatric surgery. This can completely change your life. I'm Dr. Bobby Baskerow. I'm a robotic bariatric surgeon. I do robotic weight loss surgery, which can completely change your life. I offer three different types of surgeries that can completely change your life. The sleeve gastrectomy, the lap band, and the Roux-en-Y gastric bypass. One thing that's very unique about our program is that we have a dietitian, and you will get counseled on what to eat, what not to eat, and how to optimize the utilization of your tool for good weight loss. اهلا بحضراتكم مره ثانيه في الجزء الاخير من حلقتنا النهارده اللي بنتكلم فيها عن هشاشه العظام موضوع مهم جدا وزي ما باكد بهم السيدات والرجال الحقيقه يعني مش عارف اشكر حضراتكم ازاي على التفاعل جاي لنا اسئله كتير معظمها يعني متغطي في البرزنتيشن ولكن انا هحاول اختار الاسئله اللي هي شويه بره البرزنتيشن واسالها للدكاتره ضيوفي النهارده Uh, على اساس انه الاسئله اللي اتغطت اوريدي خلاص uh, في البرزنتيشن. Uh, few questions before we start. Uh, asthmatic patient 49 years old, he's taken prednisone 60 um, every day, 60 milligram every day, so he's asking if he needs to be screened, he's 49 years old and he start feeling diffuse pain all over. So, so yeah, basically as um, uh, the recommendations, the new guideline Anyone take prednisone more than 7.5 milligram, okay. more than six months, 
has or three months. Seven point five. Seven point five has to so be. So sixty is like high yeah, bit of a low, dose. very high. Yes. Okay. Has to be taken a, a medication to prevent osteoporosis, okay. even if the bone mineral density is normal. Okay. So. Even if bone mineral density is normal, you have to take a medication. So he so better start because it's start irrelevant to start any kind of And this is a big liability, by okay. the way. If patient gets fracture, is a problem. Okay. So we have to, anyone, anyone above 7.5 has to, more than three to six months, has to be taking medications actually for that for life. Okay. Ustaz Maurice, I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to say that you're going to take 60 milligrams of prednisone every day. Uh, نتيجة الأزمة اللي حضرتك مش عارف تحطها يعني مش الدكتور مش عارف يحطها under control زي ما قال دكتور ماتيس أي واحد على سبعة ونص مللي جرام بس من البرينيزون لو بتاخده يوميا لمدة ست شهور uh, حضرتك لازم لازم تاخد أدوية uh, المسح هنا مش هيجيب نتيجة لأنه حتى لو المسح اتعمل وطلع الديكس بتاع حضرتك نورمال زي ما قال دكتور ماتيس لازم تتحط على ميديكيشن اني anyway. فمن الافضل ان احنا نبتدي مديكيشن على طول لهشاشه العظام آه عشان آه ده هيساعد حضرتك كتير جدا انه ما يحصلش لا قدر الله اي نوع آه من المشاكل في المستقبل. دكتور تشان، وات ار ذا سيمتومز؟ وات وير اكسبكتنج هير ان اوستيوبروتيك بيشن؟ Yeah, that's a good question. So we talked about this multiple times. It is osteoporosis is a silent disease until you have a fracture. So everything's focused on prevention. But when we talk about fractures, which body parts are we talking about, right? Okay. If you're a soccer player and you injure your toe, is that a fragility fracture from osteoporosis? No, not Necess not necessarily. Okay. So what we're focused on are you know spinal fractures, what we call compression fractures or like hip fractures. Um, and then sometimes, you know, people have fractures in their shoulders or in their legs, which is quite unusual. Um, so then afterwards, they may have pain, deformities, disability. Um, even someone who hasn't fell fallen and hurt themselves, just with gravity, with age, if you have osteoporosis, you can kind of lose your height and, and get shorter, get more, you know, um, um, kyphotic. Okay. Um, people get depressed after they have a fracture because they have to get hospitalized. They can't do their job. They can't get out, be with their family. Um, and then there's a higher mortality with hip fractures. You know, there can be surgical complications. People can have a DVT or, um, you know, a clot in their lungs. Okay, pass. perfect. I uh, Literally, I was going through a question, and we have more than 20 questions mm -hmm. asking about omeprazole 40 milligram because mm -hmm. it seems like you scared people when you talked about, mm -hmm. um, like, anti-acid reflux medication. Yeah. So what's the recommendation? People who's taking omeprazole, they're at risk. Like what's going on? I have a lot of questions about. So uh, what I commonly see PPRs. now is a lot of physicians are trying to move away from omeprazole when it's not needed anymore. So for example, and this depends on what the the doctor decides with their patient, right? If they have a severe ulcer, they may need to take it for a long time. But if the ulcer is resolved and or they're no longer having symptoms, they may change the medication to something else, like in uh, famotidine or H2 you know H2 blockers, something like that instead. But it depends on what is their disease. Do they need it, and should they be screened? Right? Okay, right. So. PPI is at worse than H2 blockers when it comes to osteoporosis, or I, I think the si the, like more side the risk of osteoporosis is only listed for um, PPIs, PPIs, not for H2 blockers. Okay. Yes. The fact that all the people who are asking us, the fact that I have about 15 or 20 questions, all of them are basically talking about the same point. The people who are taking the drugs for the pain. Uh, وتحديدا اللي هي عيلة زول وميبرازول كل العيلة دي بشكل عام uh, عندي أسئلة كتير جدا uh, عليهم الناس اللي بتاخد 40 ميلي جرام سواء مرة أو مرتين في اليوم uh, زي ما قال الدكتور تشان انه يعني uh, الدكاترة دلوقتي بتحاول إذا الأعراض بقت أفضل والسيمتومز اتحسنت بنحاول نبعد على ال عن الكلاس ده من الميديكيشن ونروح لكلاس تاني uh, اسمه اتش 2 بلوكرز ف يعني ممكن ده يحط حضراتكم في ريسك ولكن طالما السيمتومز اتحسنت ممكن ننقل على نوع تاني من ادويه الحموضه. كان سؤالي قبل الاسئله دي كلها عن ادويه الحموضه لدكتور تشان عن اعراض حشاشه العظام، قالت زي ما احنا قلنا في الاول انه حشاشه العظام بشكل عام ما فيهاش اي نوع من الالم فده مهم جدا ولكن دايما بنكير اكتر على الكومبليكيشنز او المشاكل الصحيه اللي بتحصل زي الكسور Uh, زي الديفورميتيز اللي بتحصل uh, فده كله uh, مهم ان احنا نهتم بيه اكتر من في ال يعني النتائج اللي بتتكون عن هشاشه العظام بتبقى اكتر بكتير من فكره الاعراض بتاع هشاشه العظام uh, كمرض. So Dr. Matthias, Dr. Chin, how we diagnose osteoporosis in general? Yeah, usually we give first is doing DEXA study. Okay. And uh, for any postmenopausal room, as Dr. Moyo said, and that's the main thing. 
But what's next step for doing blood work? So we do imaging and blood work. Yes, exactly. Okay. So the blood work, simple blood work for simple patients, like say that patients has osteoporosis, simple one after age, uh, like 60s or something. We do simple physical exam and uh, we, we, uh, we see his, take a good history from the patient about family history and others. Okay. And then we do simple blood work, CBC, comprehensive panel, to look for the kidney function. We do vitamin D to look to it. And uh, also, uh, if patient is a kind of secondary osteoporosis, which is younger age with osteoporosis, patient has other what do, what do we mean by secondary osteoporosis? Like which is, we have uh, something led to osteoporosis? Yes, okay. which is actually Just second a disease causing that or okay. something making this happening or unusual presentations on young age. Uh, we see a men like four years old with multiple fracture okay. or some a woman yeah, young age and she develops minus four Or they're taking medication for something else and yes. they get osteoporotic as a side effect from exactly. the that secondary osteoporosis. Or sometimes when we see like when we do the bone density test there is some called T-score, which measure T-score, or there is some called Z-score. Okay. And Z-score, if it's high, tell me there is something going on different. Okay. So at that time, I do more blood tests. I do thyroid function. I do parathyroid to rule out parathyroid hormone, hyperparathyroidism with causing that. Definitely, I look to the medications that patients has. Sometimes we do 24-hour urine calcium because our body excrete too much calcium sometimes, okay. and we get rid of calcium, so there is no calcium to build in bone. So sometimes it's a kidney problem, and it causes osteoporosis. Yes. Okay. Uh, and also we do some other hormonal tests, like cortisol level to rule out like Cushing syndromes, or auto, like uh, uh, endocrine problem, okay. causing that, or uh, hypothyroidism, and, or uh, anything like that. So basically there is certain patients we do that. There is something called bone markers. We do the test in the blood and, and urine and that's not it's done sometimes com like commercially but the problem lab is different so it's basically in clinical trial mainly in clinical trial but can be a guidance monitoring of medications so it's it's not covered by the insurance so far here it's in the It's covered US. by insurance, it's but covered. sometimes the result is, cannot be interpreted very well. So basically, it has to be standardized, usually clinical trial. Okay. In men, we do sometimes testosterone level. Okay. In, wom in women, sometimes we do hormonal level, hyperprolactin, and like a kind of uh, uh, estrogen, progesterone, early monobose, okay. sometimes causing that. So there is certain time we do more tests. Okay. But usually, general, simple test. CBC, Campanil, vitamin D is more than enough. Okay, your message today to our young men who's using anabolic steroids at the gym. Yeah, because, this is a problem uh, because... Uh, actually, like, a couple questions here about anabolic steroids. That is, that's a problem. For this, we have to see how much equivalent to steroid okay. is, and I think it's a good idea to have a bone density to see that because, you know what, let me tell you something very interesting. Athletics, younger age female, 20 years old, runners, they actually they lost their period because of the running, right. and this causing severe fracture sometimes. Right. And we see that fracture in young age from just simple athletics and runners and hormonal competitive and athletics. So there is some hormonal changes happening in younger age that can affect this. So for anabolic steroid can cause also osteoporosis. Okay. Shabab uh, Ma'anal Telephone, California. Mariam in California. Tfaddali Harrik al Hello. Ahlan Fan. Tfaddali Harrik al Hello. Fan. هريك على الهواء. أه أنا بوجه سؤالي للدكتور سني متياس. تفضل. أنا كنت بتعالج عنده وكان عندي فيبروماليجيا. We have one of your patients. كنت بتعالج وليريكا. أوكي. وبعدين دخلت في متاهات ثانية اللي هو بحث كيميائي فامتنعت عن الاتهاب يعني للدكتور سني وبعدها التأمين بتاعي اتغير. فانا الحال لغايه الان مستمره عليهم هل ينفع ولا لازم اغير العلاج؟ حضرتك بتاخدي كيماوي لايه يا فندم؟ كانت عندي حاجه في الدم كده فبس انا بطلت يعني خلص, خلص وباخد حبوب ثانيه لمده سنه. اوكي. بس قبل الكيماوي اول جلسه مع الكيماوي جات لي جلسه في رجلي طلعت على الرئه وطلعت على القلب وحسب تقرير الدكتور يعني انا نزلت منها بمعجزه الهيه. م. و عشان كده ما باخد ليكويز و واسبرين معاه. ليكويز. فانا رحت الدكتور ثاني عشان يكتب لي حاجه راح كتب لي كورتيزون فنفع في جسمي وانتقل على رجلي وبقت الشقاد اقدر امشي فبطلته. فمش عارفه هل استمر على البيرتا والسمبلسا ولا في حاجه ثانيه علاج اخر. حاضر. 
we have a follow-up office visit here. <laughs> One of your patients, uh, she was in chemotherapy. She got all uh, DVTs, pulmonary embolism. She's an Eliquis aspirin. She has fibromyalgia, and you prescribed her um, a Cymbalta and Lurk. You know, fibromyalgia is it's a difficult disease, too, and it needs a lot of uh, 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 change lifestyle and a lot of uh, work differently for right. patients more than doctors sometimes. Right. And uh, uh, basically, Lurk and Cymbalta can be taken all the time, even with chemo or without. It depends on the case, definitely, case to case, and all the things, and side effects and others. And definitely, that will not stop the patient to doing their own part of exercise, walking, stretching, sleeping, because that's the main treatment still for fibromyalgia. Okay. Uh, so basically, so it's different from patient to patient, and it's not an easy disease. And having, having and I see that a lot of patients with cancer patients, they have more risk of getting fibromyalgia, the, the stress of the disease, okay. the stress of medications, and most, most of this medication called neuropathy also, right. and adding more problem fibromyalgia. So that's an that's So an she needs a, like a little bit of close-up evaluation. Yes, exactly. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Dr. Matthias, no كتير من المرضى تحديدا بتوع الكيمو من الميديكيشنز بيحصل لهم نوع من النيروباثي أو التهاب الأعصاب الطرفية تحديدا ده ممكن يكون سبب من أسباب الألم. طبعا كل مرضى الفايبرومالجيا بيبقى محتاجين ستايل من الحياه مختلف آه كمان لازم يحصل ايفالويشن كامل للحاله بعد كل اللي حضرتك ذكرتيه هنحاول نرجع لحضرتك بعد الحلقه آه على التليفون هكلم حضرتك وناخد هيستوري اكتر آه معلش انا بدبسك على الهواء بس آه فهنكلم حضرتك بعد الهواء عشان نشوف ايه يعني ايه الاحداث اللي حصلت وادت انه ممكن يكون في فلير اب ممكن يكون التهاب في اعصاب طرفيه فالمشكلة أكبر من إنه يعني نقيمها على الهواء بسرعة. معلش أنا جاي لي أسئلة كتير جدا بس الحقيقة يعني مهم إن إحنا نكمل شوية الأسئلة اللي جايين وهحاول آخد أسئلة كمان في النص. Is it preventable disease or okay? So there are steps that we can take to help prevent osteoporosis and osteoporotic fractures. Okay. First and foremost, as rheumatologists, we we aim to decrease the amount of steroids, for example, that our patients are taking. So any medication that puts you at risk for osteoporosis, we recommend that you have a, you know, a good long discussion with your provider to see whether or not it is actually possible to taper off some of those medications. Okay. Other things that can be helpful um, include weight-bearing exercise. So developing a personalized plan to help uh, increase bone density um, to prevent bone loss is very important, as well as, as um, avoiding muscle atrophy. Okay. Um, as we had mentioned earlier, um, smoking um, and excess alcohol can put one at risk for osteoporosis. So we generally try and counsel our patients to um, decrease their intake or stop if possible. Okay. Um, and then most importantly, especially in our older, uh, with our older patients, uh, we like to counsel them on how to prevent falls. So uh, some, sometimes we... Um, We'll instruct patients to go to a physical therapist so they can start um, exercising and maybe develop um, strength, uh, better gait. But in general, we'll tell folks to, um, you know, tuck away electrical cords, uh, make sure that their rugs are on the floor correctly so that they don't trip. Like safety um, maneuvers. Yes, yeah, safety. Simple safety measures that will help them prevent themselves from, from falling. Okay. And here, so Ali, Dr. Q, can I... ازاي نقدر هل هو مرض ممكن نحافظ على نفسنا او نقلل يعني نحفظ نفسنا منه بريفنتبل نقدر نمنعه يعني زي ما هي قالت انه ممكن ناخد شويه خطوات تساعدنا شويه ان احنا نقلله اهمهم على الاطلاق طبعا ان احنا نبص على الادويه اللي بناخدها تاني حاجه شويه شويه اكسرسايز عشان ده بيساعد بنا العظم بتاعنا بشكل كبير جدا طبعا احبائنا المدخنين يمكن كل مرض ذكرناه مع كل ضيف جالنا قال انه التدخين جزء من الصوره المرضيه دي فطبعا مهم جدا انه نوقف تدخين آه طبعا الكحوليات مهمه جدا دايما نبص على السلامه اللي موجوده في البيت السجاجيد الحاجات دي اي حاجه ممكن تادي انه الواحد يتكعبل او يقع بنحاول نقلل الوقعات دي بشكل عام. Uh, Dr. Chen, if I showed you how many questions here I got about formulas and vitamin D and calcium from Costco and mm -hmm. a lot of other questions I'm getting. We're buying this formula from Amazon. 
What's the deal with calcium and vitamin D and osteoporosis? Yeah, so let's talk about just like the regular normal patient who doesn't have any disease. So the USDA recommendation is about 1,200 milligrams of calcium intake, and that doesn't mean from your pill. That means okay. from what In you're general. eating, okay. and then if you're not getting enough from what you're eating, then you can supplement that with, you know, uh, over-the-counter vitamins. So what's an extreme example of somebody who's not getting enough calcium? So somebody who may have had a bowel surgery, they had to get part of their intestines removed. No matter what they eat, the food the is going through them so gone. fast, yeah. they can't absorb it. They need right. supplements. So um, other people would be like, um, uh, um, so essentially that example, let's go to the next slide. I'll show you some examples of uh, food, food sure. that has 22. lots of calcium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so collard greens, 360 milligrams, kale. You know, there's a lot of vegetables people don't realize that have calcium seafood, fish, and then of course our dairy products, you know, so, but then a lot of people are lactose intolerant, they cannot take those things, and in that case, and if they don't like vegetables, they can't drink milk, they don't like yogurt, then maybe supplement is a better idea. Perfect. Yeah. Now, so Ali, Dr. Chen, can I the calcium and vitamin D, فعلا, يعني قدام ربنا كمية الأسئلة اللي جاية لي عن الفورميلز المختلفة بتاعة الكالسيوم وفيتامين دي وناس كتير قوي بعتلي بنجيب ده من كاسكو بنجيب ده من على أمازون ومش عارف إيه أسئلة كتير جدا على الفورميلز باختصار شديد جدا زي ما قال الدكتور تشين الكالسيوم مهم جدا الكالسيوم الاستهلاك اليومي بتاعنا بيبقى حوالي 1200 ملي جرام وزي ما هي قالت نقطة مهمة جدا لما بنقول 1200 ملي جرام بيشمل السبليمنت وبيشمل الأكل الناس اللي ما بتقدرش تاخد دم الاكل نتيجه ان هم ما بيحبوش ديري برودكتس عندهم مشاكل في المعده آه عمليات في الامعاء الحاجات دي كلها مهم ياخدوا سبلمنتس بس طالما آه بناخد الكالسيوم سواء عن طريق الاكل او عن طريق السبلمنتس ده بيبقى مهم جدا فيتامين دي كمان 800 آه وحده في اليوم فده مهم جدا وكمان آه حقيقه آه يعني دكتور تشان مشكوره جابت لنا النسب الكالسيوم المعينه في الاكل وفي لسته اللي قدام حضراتكم هنزلها على صفحتنا الرئيسية النهاردة على الفيسبوك تقريبا فيها أنواع كتير من الأكل والكالسيوم قد إيه في كل أكلة وزي ما أنا قلت لحضراتكم النسب اللي قدام حضراتكم دي محسوبة من الـ 1200 ملي جرام بتاع كل يوم. I have a double question here. Uh, is calcium dangerous? Because like last episode for example uh, I had a nephrologist and she gave a big warning about like consumption, calcium consumption. And my second part of the question, who would get treated for osteoporosis? Okay, first question is, is calcium dangerous? It has two answers. Number one, calcium is essential for bone metabolism. Okay. okay? That's an important. Right. So we need 1,200, as There's we said. There's no question about yes. it. Yes. <laughs> but the, it's dangerous for people who take uh, excess calcium. Okay. So some people take tons, for example, four or five tons per day. Every one, 500 milligram, let's make it like around 2,000. Okay. So that's a problem. And plus adding 1,200, right. that's a big problem. Some people taking too much, eating a lot of calcium right. and plus dairy. Mm -hmm. We have to know that every, every cup of milk is 300, every yogurt is 300. So when you add that and then you take the supplement and that's make it, that's excess. Okay. When you have too much calcium, it cause calcifications in the aortas, in the arteries, and that's what's called hardening of the arteries and causes okay. heart problem. So when it get to the recommendation, calcium is bad, that's if you do too much calcium. Okay. But some people take mega vitamin, which is thousands, and patients who bring me sometimes the office like 20 bottles of, of vitamin, everyone has a, thousands of calcium, that's a lot. Okay. So if you take exactly 1,200, and that's what you do every day, that's not dangerous, that's important. Okay. Uh, the second part, who is getting treated? Yes. Yeah. So we, we usually treat, uh, we say it this way. Every patient has osteoporosis more than minus 2.5 T-score has to be treated, number one. Okay. Number two, every patient has osteopenia, which osteopenia is starting from minus one to minus 2.5 with high risk. So osteopenia has is decreased production, but it's not thin Osteopenia yet. is a stage before osteoporosis. It's not we about have, quality, it's about quantity, right? Yeah, it's the stage of, of when measurement are by, by bone density. Okay. So we have normal below min a T score minus one and osteopenia from minus one to minus 2.5 okay. and osteoporosis above 2.5. So okay. anyone from minus one to minus 2.5 with high risk of fracture, which is can be like uh, smoking and lean less than 120 pound 
and somebody has a kind of uh, uh, like a fracture before or family has to fracture that's considered high risk or pre-monopause like early early monopause something like that so that's considered high risk Perfect. but that's important but we have to know that anyone has fracture fragility fractures actually has to get treated Perfect. even the normal bone density okay I have a quick question here because we didn't go through this and um, she's asking uh, she she's 19 years old a polycystic ovary syndrome and she's taking oral contraceptives she's asking would that affect her bone density by any means I don't see any reason here unless we have uh, uh, like if, if she has any kind of uh, bone density is low okay. you can do it because all what this stuff is not, if she still have period, or even there's no period, but she still has hormones, that's okay. Okay. In the case of Dr. Matisse, he was about calcium, or not. He said, of course, calcium is very important for the body, but as we said, everything is good with the relationship, it's good. The 1200 dollars, as he said, it's good for them too, so it's important for us to know the food, we don't take more calcium from the natural, because it's not going to cause any problems. في الكليتين زي ما قلنا المرة اللي فاتت ولكن كمان بيسبب مشاكل في الشرايين والأوردة سؤالي التاني ليه مين اللي لازم أو يتعالج من مرض هشاشة العظام قال إنه إحنا لازم نعمل ترجمة للديكسل بتاعة الريزولتس وبنسميها حاجة اسمها التي سكورز من واحد لاتنين ونص بيبقى الناس دي عندها إنتاج العظم بيبقى قليل بشكل كبير ولكن هشاشة العظم بتبتدي بعد ما التي سكور يبتدي يبقى أكتر من ماينس اتنين ونص دولة لازم نبتدي نحطهم تحت العلاج بالنسبة للسؤال بتاع الأكياس اللي على المبيض واحدة من السادة المشاهدين بتقول إنه بنتها عندها أكياس على المبيض وبتاخد حبوب منع الحمل فده بيسبب هشاشة العظام زي ما قال دكتور ماتيس هو مش شايف انه في علاقة بين ده وده انلس اذا في مشاكل تانية بتسبب مشاكل في هشاشة العظام بشكل عام alright let's get in business and uh, Dr. Chan treatment how, how do we treat like we talked about the problem like too much how do we treat <laughs> Yeah, we have a lot of different options, but the, probably the most common worldwide treatment is bisphosphonate category. So these are oral medications um, such as Fosamax, Actinel, or Boniva. Okay. Um, Fosamax is a little bit more commonly used in the U.S. because we see that it has the highest chance of, you know, helping with bone density in the back and the hip. Okay. Um, some major side effects uh, uh, would be acid reflux that's not listed there. You know, some people have a lot of bad stomach pains or gastritis. So we recommend, you know, if you're starting it for the first time, definitely every time you take the medication, you should not lay down for an, half an hour afterwards. I will relate that to the question mm -hmm. we got. Uh, does it cause any kind of vertigo? You know, vertigo is listed as a side effect of very many medications, and I do believe it's listed as this one, but I don't commonly have patients uh, complain of that. So whatever our uh, viewer got, the vertigo could be related to that. There's a possibility, but she would have to see a physician to determine that. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then other things would be um, jaw osteonecrosis is a very scary side effect. It's very rare. You see that a little bit more in patients who may have undergone cancer therapy or who had some sort of dental procedure um, and then had poor bone healing while they were on the medication. Okay. Um, atypical fracture is a concern if you have used the medication, let's say, for over 10 years, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, um, or some incorrect usage of the medication. So therefore, to prevent these kind of problems, you know, around the five-year mark, if they're doing well, the, the doctor looks at their bone density, we may give them a drug holiday, a vacation from taking the medication. Okay. Before we start the injectable, let me translate this mm -hmm. part very quick. The truth is, the most important thing is how to treat the disease of the skin. There are things, as we said, that are taken in the blood, the blood, the blood, the oral. The most important thing is that the three of them are the Fosamax, the Actonel, and the Boniva. أشهر أعراض جانبية ليهم على الإطلاق اللي هو إنه بيحصل مشاكل في العظم بتاع الفك يعني مشاكل كبيرة جدا وبالذات للناس اللي بتعمل حاجات في أسنانها في الوقت ده طبعا ممكن يحصل مشاكل في العضلات بشكل عام ماسكل سكيلتل فده كله ممكن يبقى من الأعراض الجانبية كمان إجابة بقى للسؤال اللي إحنا وعدنا إن إحنا هنجاوبه في بداية الحلقة المشاهدة اللي اتصلت وقالت انه حصل لها دوخه بعد ما ابتدت تاخد البونيفا آه زي ما دكتور تشين قالت انه ده واحد من السايد افكتس المشهوره بس طبعا ده بيخضع لتقييم طبيب لازم الطبيب يقيم ده ولو هو قرر انه الدوخه دي جايه من البونيفا ده بيحصل واحده من السايد افكتس المشهوره جدا وحضرتك لازم تحولي على نوع تاني من الادويه هنقوله مع حضرتك انجكتبلز 
So injectable medications, there's IV reclass, which is similar to the medications we talked about before. It just comes as an IV form once per year. Um, we think about this in patients who have a lot of the, the stomach problems uh, or our elderly patients who just have troubles taking their medications. Okay. Um, and then uh, Prolia is another type of injection, but this is a little bit more simple. It's kind of like a stomach or a thigh injection that they just get twice per year. And the major side effects related to that would be injection site reactions, you know, if they have itching or an allergy, um, low calcium levels, we can check their blood before they get every injection to make sure their calcium levels are good. Perfect. The thing is, other things that are taken on the way of the skin, the things that are taken on the way of the skin, are the main types of reclast and prolia. The reclast is taken once a year, and the prolia is taken once a year. The most important thing for the skin is that, of course, the rash is very harsh that happens after the skin. The other thing is that it reduces the calcium in the blood. فمهم جدا ان احنا دايما نعمل تحاليل عشان نتابع النوع ده من الادويه زي ما قلنا لحضراتكم هقول بسرعه تاني قررنا ثلاث حاجات بالبق فوسا ماكس اكتونيل بونيفا الحاجات اللي بتتاخد عن طريق الحقن آآ آآ اللي هم اشهرهم الريكلاس والبروليا بشكل كبير uh, what about other kind of medication the newest kind of medications yes. we have actually uh, anabolic drug which is only builder Built only because most of medication we talked before it's basic we reserve what we have and some building so this is anabolic building which like for two and timulus is one of them and they only have limited time number to, uh, years to give like for two two years only and then it's follow up with another drug timulus one and a half year and there is a new one is called evanity yeah and evanity actually We're is very about it a lot, interesting a lot drug it's like dual mechanism right. it built and same time it prevent resorption of bone so it work like dual like both kinds okay. and that's a new one from amgen done like this year actually and it's one it says two shots one some months for 12 months only and we both this kind of group given to people who have acute fracture or have early, uh, multiple fractures Faster so results. it heal fracture mm -hmm. because the only way to heal fracture in the back actually is to build. this kind of medications not surgery there is no surgery for for fracture back so okay. and it's very painful so this is kind of help those only, kind of fragile fractures yes this is a kind of fractures that we see compression fracture for patients who have multiple fracture or, uh, or recent fracture i think this kind of medication would be work very well okay the only thing about evanity if patient has a history of heart attack or stroke in the last year we don't give it but generally other than that this all so any hypercoagulable yes. state yes okay uh برضو الكلاس الجديد تقريبا دي احدث حاجات نزلت uh, uh, el forteo, el timeless, uh, dola, uh, ahdas el hagat el nizalit, kaman fi hagas maha, evanity, dola baran et nin shots, uh, fil shahr, maratin, uh, fil shahr, uh, kul bas el, 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 yani, el lehna bin bus ali, el hoa, lo fi ayma shakil fil galatat, el zabahat el sodreya, el hagadi, uh, el, 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 el clots el bit kawan fil reglain, ده بيبقى مهم جدا والحاجه الحقيقه اللي قالها دكتور ماتياس عن الايفانيتي انه بيستخدم في حالات الستريس فراكشرز زي ما بنسميها لانه بيعالج بشكل كبير عشان حضراتكم تبصوا على الستريس فراكشرز دي لو بصينا لده لو مش عارف الكاميرا ده كده هنا ده اسمه ستريس فراكشر بيبقى كسر في الفقرات بشكل عام وده ما بيبقالوش علاج غير ان احنا ندي الانواع دي من الادويه فده بيبقى مهم جدا ان احنا uh, يعني نبص على الحاجات دي لانه ده مهم جدا. How do you monitor treatment very quick? Right, so um, bones grow slowly, so after you start the medication, we typically check them after two years, the bone density repeated again. Okay, uh, and how we treat osteoporosis, uh, in general, like uh, who treats osteoporosis? Sure. Yeah. So usually um, uh, patients will begin treatment maybe with their family, um, family physician or their internist. Um, oftentimes a gynecologist can start treatment uh, more complicated cases oftentimes come to us, rheumatologists, as well as uh, endocrinologists um, or nephrologists who are yeah. kidney doctors. Um, if the osteoporosis is related to uh, cancer care, uh, then patients should seek care from their oncologist. Okay. Hey, a question is very important. The first one is how we watch. It's important that we always watch the size of the bone in a general way. Many of the family physicians, the physicians or the patient, or the important thing is that نتابع بشكل افضل طبعا مع المتخصصين ان احنا نتابع مع روماتولوجيست في الموضوع ده فده بيبقى مهم جدا. One last message to our osteoporotic patients. So, osteoporosis is very common and it's preventable disease. You can prevent it and with exercise and calcium and all this. And also it's a disease is not something that comes and goes. It's for lifelong. So it's chronic. 
yes, a chronic lifelong. And basically, it's, uh, there is a lot of treatment, different kind of treatment. There is oral, injectable, intravenously, all kind of treatment we give now. We have big advances, osteoporosis. It happened in men and women and it's painless so you have to go yourself and ask the doctors it will not happen anything so screening is important yes. and well. the cause of death from osteoporosis more than cause of death and heart attack and stroke wow. okay thank you so much it was very informative as usual we had the pleasure and honor to have you guys today الرساله الاخيره من دكتور ماتيس انه الحقيقه انه مرض مزمن لازم نتابع لازم نعمل الفحوصات الشامله لسكرين المسح مرض مزمن يعني بيتاخد له ادويه زي اي نوع من الامراض الثانيه ممكن يتمنع بان احنا دايما ناخد الكالسيوم فيتامين دي بتاعنا الاكسرسايز مهم جدا زي ما انا قلنا المتابعه مع الطبيب لانه مرض مش ملوش اعراض واضحه جدا ولكن المسح الشامل والمتابعه مع الطبيب حسب الجايد لاينز اللي قلناها لحضراتكم النهارده هتبقى مهمه جدا بشكر حضراتكم على حسن المتابعه والتفاعل الكبير جدا اللي بشكر حضراتكم عليه كتير جدا نشوفكم ان شاء الله على خير وحلقه جديده من وايت كوت الاسبوع الجاي